Yes, sir. It's your boy Kyle the Kid and Mega the Boy, and welcome to another episode of Vibe with Your Boys podcast. This is a special, special episode, wrapping up the end of the year. We're joined again by the breaking news reporter for the second time this year. He's graced us with his presence. How you doing, John? I'm alive for now, which is good. You know, that, that that's it. You you just alive for now. You, I'm alive. I'm doing pretty good for now. As long as I'm filming, you probably are tired of hearing this. I'm doing good. <laughs> yeah. He's not lying. He's telling you the truth. Yeah, yeah, man. You know? uh, it's been, I would say, maybe six, seven months. I, I'm not sure in the exact time since you last joined us. But how has your 2022 been, man? You know, at first, since January, it's been good. Getting stories, recording, getting better at getting to scenes, shootings, fires, crime, to really keep the community up to date. Now, it's been slow. It's been terrible. But I feel like this is the year where it's not the best. Been a lot of hardships, but it's a stepping stone to greatness. Just what is that with reporting life or just this all around? You know, my life is so heavily embezzled in reporting. I like to say um personal reporting, like on the streets, right? That that has taught me to be a better person, connect with people, learn from people, that I feel so much transformed. From January of this year to December of this year, I think I have not only grown, but I flourished. I still got a long way to go. But I think that this year was a very important lesson to learn, though. Most definitely. And of course, if you're watching this and you're familiar with the Breaking News Reporter, you're familiar with all his great work he's been doing throughout the year and mm -hmm. the whole city of Broward County, I mean the whole county uh, was happy for you when you landed the job at the Channel 10 News as a cameraman. So once again, I want to extend the crack. congratulations now that I'm seeing you and uh, continue to do your good work, man. How is that feeling to um, land that job and finally get that next step towards your goal? Absolutely. You know, there was no words that can describe that. I know that's a cliche, mm -hmm. but literally, w this is how it happened. I always thought I was never going to make it. I'm very hard on myself. Yeah. When I, because the way that the local 10, they reached out to me on Instagram. Mm. Um, they put advertisements on social media because people, they were trying to find people um, and reporters that I work with. This is why making connections is so important. I'll always talk to people. And put your work on social media because that's how they found me. And they said, listen, I think that would you be interested in being a uh, photojournalist mm -hmm. or a pr producer um, or an editor? I'm like, no, a cameraman, I have this experience. Here's what I have. They looked at it. They said, okay, why don't you come in? We'll see how you do. We'll train you for a little bit. And it was an amazing feeling. I uploaded that photo. It, it was the only post I got 2,500 likes, more than that. I got love from the whole country, the community, everybody. So it was not only a beautiful feeling, but I mean, I can't explain it. Everybody was hyping me up. Finally, I made it. I think you uploaded a post where you got a little teary eyed, right? It was I cried because you know what? Mm -hmm. Ever since years, I wanted to, to, since 2009, I wanted to finally work at a news station. Um, Remember, this is a professional career. Yes. This is something that you have to go to them. You have to have the best because this is a big market, Miami. Me getting the job here, I'm like, whoa, you know, I can't, there's no worse to describe it, you know. I was about to pass out. <laughs> I thought it was C and double, you know. So it, it became <laughs> it became a surreal moment for you. Um, it has. Now, with that being said, when you seen all that love that you were getting, did it kind of like put acknowledgement on all the good work that you've been doing in the community? I really think so. It did. Now, I'm, I I will say that I'm kind of mad that that is the only post that got so much love. And then the other posts only get 100 or 300 likes. I want some more love. But anyways, yes. <laughs> Show some more love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's just a photo, you know. But anyways, I never upload photos. But, but thank you for the love, everybody. I just want to say yes. People the people have been commenting, this guy deserves it. This guy, oh, I'm so happy mm -hmm. this channel has hired this guy because this guy is a will oil machine. He doesn't stop. He gets up every day, tears, blood, and sweat. He doesn't sleep. He deserved the job, and people were going crazy in the comments, the shares, people mm -hmm. that I never seen in 10 years, people from my high the haters, people Ooh. that didn't like it. <laughs> it was hilarious. Talk people your stuff. 
people that that did not believe in me were saying, "Oh my goodness, I'm so happy I went to school with you. You're the best. Oh my God, you're amazing. You're handsome. You're oh, I love you. Oh, it is. I am so happy I met you in high school. Wait a minute. I thought you were the one that rejected me. You know, I thought you didn't. I I thought you thought I you said I was the weird kid in class. Yeah. You know? Anyways. She yeah. always gonna come back, ain't it? She always gonna come back. Yeah, my boy. I think they do because one, they say, you know what, this guy has serious connections now. I think I want to join him. Mm-hmm. Listen, when you get a, a bigger position in life, suddenly you make all these new friends, mm-hmm. like when you win the lottery, and that's exactly how it was. One in a million chance. I finally got the job. You know, I still don't know how. Grace of God, of course. And through all your good work. You know what? If I didn't if I didn't get a job at a news station, I was gonna give up. I really was gonna give up. I seen I seen you say that you I was were gonna very give up. close to giving up, and I seen people in the comments saying they would have been very mad at you or they, they're mad yeah. at you for even thinking that. But in this year it um has been very, you know, productive for the podcast and the platform to I'm where happy. like I said before, you you were an inspiring factor in yeah, how much work we put in Hell you know, yeah. and, and releasing a whole bunch of episodes. So I know that feeling to where like you can, you're putting in so much work and you can be like, man, is this going to pay off? Am I doing all this for no reason? And that being said with us, you were putting in even more work huh. w- of, than us because you're, we, we record, you know, at this time, you're right, right. it could be three, four times a week, but this is not, you could you can be reporting at this time in the morning. Yeah. While we're asleep. Oh, of course. You know, noon. Like you 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 don't stop. Never. So talk to us before we get into, you know, some of the topics. Sure. Talk to us about that feeling of, you know, almost giving up. Like what was the thought process? The reason why I was gonna give up is because I lost a job in March. So um I was uh, I left Tire Kino. I used to be a mechanic. I left that job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had enough money to survive and do my videos. Mm-hmm. And I kept I kept surviving off that money, being frugal. The reason why I was going to give up is because I had no money. I couldn't keep living on. I Because driving, insurance, gas, it's subscription to Adobe, video editors, you know. I'm just saying, this is not, it's not easy to live. You don't got money. That's why I was going to give up. Another reason why is because... How come one account posts a cell phone video gets way more views and love than when I post a hard made story, me in front of the camera, carrying a heavy tripod, big camera, getting a wire out, trying to think of what to say, Mm -hmm. gathering research, going to get all these angles, and it doesn't get anything. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, you know what? Maybe it's time for me to hang up. The mic. Did you did you have a plan of what you was gonna do when you hang up the mic, or did you have Two any things. thoughts? Yeah, man, I was sad and depressed. I wanted to end it, and that you know, I wanted oh, yeah. to say, now, hold on a second. Okay. I wanted to go back to either being a mechanic, uh-huh. or you know what? That's really it. Oh, just that, that was the only give up. back to what you know. Yeah, but it's so sad when you work on something you love and you think you're gonna make it, you don't make it. <laughs> it's what happened, you know. <laughs> Where is the love? You know, it makes you go crazy. So, what did that teach you as far as you know your content that you put out? That sometimes, yeah, a cell phone recording of what's going on because sometimes oh, it gets you mad. Did did it did it got you mad initially? But did it teach you that sometimes you know a way I can also report this is not just by speaking in front of the camera, but you know, getting a visual of the audio, a, yeah. a visual of what's going on. Maybe, you know, typing up or putting a description to it and then people see, like, did that also expand your mind as far as the content that you put out? Yeah, I mean, I had to. I, had, I, I, I hate cell phone footage. I don't like to post that stuff because it just feels so, just the aspect ratio has, has black bars on the side. Yeah. You know, what I'm trying to do is to teach this newer generation, hey, love hard made videos like i know tiktok and instagram everything's like this yeah. vertical long yeah. video so people love the cell phone footage because it's raw it's straight up it's right when it's happening great like only in day i'm just saying look it taught me listen calm down relax if people don't if, if people are gonna love it they're gonna love it and boost you up if they don't like it switch up change it it's like adapt. 
adapt. That's all what it is, you know, adapt. And when I finally got that wake up call, I'm like, why am I suffering? If it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. If I'm not going to get this, this audience to watch my stuff, so what? Let it be. I tried. I tried, you know? You know, you know what's like really beautiful about your story is yeah. Is the fact that you took an unconventional route where you just had a passion, you bought your equipment, you Absolutely. bought this, you had your car, and you decided to just put footage out and put footage out to the point where a news station has seen your work and decided to bring you on. And I think what one thing that should like show people is that there's no one way to go about doing anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you if you like something, do it. And then people are going to see it and go, you know, and, and, and applaud you. But what I do want to ask, though. Sure. You, you spoke about being frugal. Uh-huh. How did you celebrate once you got the position? Like, what, what, okay. what did you do? How did you celebrate? Oh, hey. Yeah. Tell, tell me the truth. Did the breaking news report to buy himself, buy himself something nice? Did you take yourself on a nice lunch? Like, did you do a little splurging? Like, whatever you did. When I, when I got the text message... Let's listen. Sign these forms. Get your background check. It was time to crack open that long champagne I was saving. You had for, this, for, for this moment. Absolutely. But then I said to myself, wait a minute, I can't get drunk. I got to take a drug test next day. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so that, was, that spoiled the moment, you know? There's no getting crazy now. Okay. After the drug test, hell yeah. So what did you do? What did well, I said? What did you do besides the champagne? Like, did you do anything else? Did you take yourself out? Anybody? I did go. I did go out. I think I went out with with uh, one of my female friends. Ah. I say friends because I don't want to yeah. say something yeah, yeah, else. Yeah, I yeah, get the yeah. wrong one and insulted. You know. Yeah. You know that's another chapter of life I got to talk about. But I went went out with her. We had a great time. You know, we had a fantastic. Mr. Breaking act. Reporter. Okay. Oh, we did break something. Oh, so what's going on here? <laughs> what is that? What's that? Oh, what's that breaking news reporting. Okay. And you went out and y'all okay. celebrated. I want to keep it PG. Let's keep yeah. it PG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's put some words it. into yeah, it. Yeah, we can keep it PG. No, let's get, let's get a little. I got, I, I, of course, it went crazy. I had to, you know? Yeah. Why couldn't we? Come on. That's a big moment. For sure. Why not? More money, more opportunities. Of course. Well, well, I went. I had a party, okay. got a lot oh. of my friends, and then. You know, it it was a hard night. Remember, it you know a lot of Cuban mojitos. Mo- 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 I love it. Now, don't call me weak. I love my Smirnoffs. You know, I love Smirnoff. my mixed yeah, drinks. They, they saw it. They saw it. I like little Smirnoffs. I love my mixed drinks. You know, that's mm-hmm. it. All right, for sure. So, and that's important. That's what I wanted to hear because sometimes we can be so hard on ourselves that we don't celebrate. You know, we don't moments. celebrate. And I'm I'm happy to hear that you've done that. Uh, now moving forward, of course, we bought you here today. It's, it's Towards the end of the year, we wanted to wrap up the year with, Absolutely. You, with all the good work you've done. Uh, let's start with mm-hmm. three of the biggest stories. You can start with the first one Absolutely. that you got on mind. Three of the biggest stories. The first, the biggest story that ever hit this year was when I covered the murder of Kayla Hodgson. Yes. That was a very unfortunate, yes. I mean, it's the worst, saddest thing ever because I actually saw the family. I stayed there the whole day. I didn't realize how big that was. I thought, okay, because someone, somebody told me, yo, come here. It's police. I'm like, I got, and I got a text message from a subscription I have with a police scanner. I'm like, okay, female stabbed to de- death. I'm like, wait a minute. What? I thought it was a suicide. I didn't know. I didn't even know what was yeah, going on. Yeah, you didn't on. know what was going on. I went to that scene in Tamara. I covered it. I interviewed a girl, made my story. I got drone video of the whole area. That thing exploded. When I saw how many people were tuning in, all these comments, oh my God, Rip, Rip, Kayla. I said, who's Kayla? Somebody reached out to me, told me, hey, do you not remember that girl? Like, Who is this? No, you went to high school with that girl in our English class. Wow. I had no idea. Of course, it's five years since I graduated. I can't remember. But then someone told me, yes, that's her. This is why wow. the story exploded because this girl was known by so many people. Yeah, she was very known. Yes. This was horrible. This, I think the reason why she was killed was because a girl was jealous of her and her man was flirting. You can't blame him, you know. You know, this was a girl that was very popular, making a big name for herself. I think she was an entrepreneur. I have the story. Yeah. I think she, I think it's Thompson. That's her last name. That's the girl that sliced her throat. Yeah, her name's not important. But Sorry. Yeah. And I think she came from New York to Florida just, mm-hmm. to, just to kill her. And then a month later, they capture her. I'm like, and she's smiling the mugshot. 
The saddest part was I, I came back the night. It was over 50 family members and friends. They took her body out on a stretcher. Mm -hmm. She was wrapped up with a white cloth. And I captured that. And then you will never... See, one thing about this, if people don't know what I go through, is that you will never ever forget the blood-curling, horrible screaming of a mother when she sees her daughter and her sisters, I think, and her friends. They said, the de deputies, can we see the body? Please, we need to see the body. We okay. want to see if it's her. We saw the body. Oh, my goodness, the way they were crying. I never forgot that. How did wow. that? That was the, that was so, you know. And uh, we're good, we're, we'll talk about, you know, the story and how you covered it. But how does something like that affect you as somebody covering that news? Do you have to take a moment to yourself to, you know, kind of gain co composure? Like, what is that process like? You know, that was the first time that I ever got, like, kind of caught up. I was like, I couldn't, you know, because I've been to a lot of funerals, you know. I'm very strong, mentally strong. I can take a lot. But that was the first time when I said, wow, I never felt this before. I felt very bad. And it was something that I couldn't really explain it, you know. I, I Look, regardless, I have to be there. I have to capture that. I have to get the story to people, you know. So I have to stay there. I have to put my feelings to the side, cry on the inside, and just keep going. Mm -hmm. That's why a lot of reporters end up leaving stations because they get so destroyed by this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And but I'm, you know, you know. Yeah, you you were able to uh, go through it. Now, with with that story in itself, yeah. Because of course, when you arrive to the scene, like you said, somebody may text you, "Hey, come to this place." Yeah. Do you, are you, you know, just trying to assess the situation? Are you talking to the police? Like how, because a lot of times you get to a scene, you may not know the details, but you say, hey, something is going on right here, yeah. this and that. So from that point to, you know, more news developing, what what was that process for you for, for that particular case? So here's how it works. Breaking news. You have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, you have an idea, but you really want to tell people what's going on. You really, you should just tell them the basic stuff because you might get something mixed up, which is okay because you can update it later, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what happens. The police never talk to you, mm, all okay. right? They can't. It's part of the investigation and the family, ha oh, if it's a murder, they have to let the family know. It's also a, a law called Marcy's Law where victims, no information can be released to the media until the family's made aware and the investigation is partially over, you know, or, okay. or until police... Mm. When I get to a scene, thank you, everybody, because people text me, they, they DM me, hey, what is what's going on? I get there, and I get the very basic details, and I upload the video. I tell you what I know. Mm -hmm. And then if I don't know, I will always let you guys know, hey, unfortunately, I will keep you guys up. Stay tuned, you know? Mm -hmm. And I try to get the update as fast as possible, if that's what you're asking. Yeah, so in, re in relations to that particular case, being that, you know, de okay. details uh, develop over time. Was it something that you said I'm gonna keep my eye on? Yeah, so I could report or like. I made an update video to that. Yeah, and that and that got a lot of attention. I, people thank me for that for that update. You know. All right, on and that, yeah. mo moving from there, mm -hmm. is that something that you know you learn from that experience? Does it make you tougher to handle? You know, the next thing, or how did that affect you moving forward with the rest of your uh, reporting? Yeah, that did make me um more resilient okay. to things of that nature mm -hmm. you know i already see my fair share of dead bodies you yeah. know you become immune to it the, because your goal is you don't want to storm off run away you yes. got to get that video you got to you got to stay there to make people and, aware of what's going you, on yes you got to sacrifice yourself and your mind to get that video that report to inform the community the community you know cuz most People don't want to go out there. Mm -hmm. You sacrifice your mental stability to go out there and get that stuff to keep the community aware of gotcha. the horrors of, of what happens out there. All right. And uh, what was the second on your the list? The second biggest story is literally two days later, right behind an apartment complex. In the same area. Same yeah. area. Oh, yes. A husband. I remember thinking, like, what is going on in Tamarack? <laughs> what the hell? Okay. It was a husband that shot and killed. Shot and killed his wife because of domestic dispute. Luckily, he spared the four children. I think it was four children. Mm. And um, the four children saw the mom dead. Ultimately, who called the police were neighbors because they heard gunshots. And then they came and then the guy didn't want to surrender. Come out, come out. 
boom, shoots himself in the head right in front of the kids. That was the next horrible story. Obviously, children involved. That's major. So back to back, you get hit with major devastating stories. Yeah. One 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 person, Kayla, you found out that you actually shared a class with her. I, yeah, yeah. And then the next one, a couple of days later, you find out it's a domestic dispute with kids involved. And and two people end up dead. So yeah. what was it like getting to that scene, reporting on it, and how did it affect you? You know, I had no idea until I got some more details. But I, like I said, I'm, I'm very mentally prepared. Mm-hmm. You know... It's worse on crime scene investigators because they actually get to see all that. Yeah, they Me, no. But I'm fine with it. At the end of the day, I have a strong mission, and that is to get the video and talk about it. But also, when I was there, uh, uh, one of the friends of the, of the father that killed himself, he came there, he started busting out in tears in front of me. He started saying, oh, my friend died, I can't help the kids, oh my God. And he started crying right in front of me. I felt that, you know? Mm-hmm. He's right in front of me. This is a man. It takes a lot for a grown man to cry. Okay. It takes a lot for a grown man to cry on behalf of another man. You know, especially what he's done. So, um, to a man, to a man, you feel that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Is there ever any anger you feel with somebody's, you know, devastating crimes that you feel like, how could some, how could something like this happen? Why would this person do this? Do you ever get like a little bit of anger? Of course, you may not show it, but yeah, like, right, it's right. the feeling. Oh, you you know, absolutely. What I really get angry is fatal car accidents. Okay. Drunk drivers. We all lot love to drink. I understand. But we got to do it safely. The worst thing is, what really made me mad was when a young, beautiful girl. You're not going to know about this. This happens somewhere else. Mm-hmm. But it happens here as well. A mm-hmm. young, beautiful girl in college going to become a nurse to save people, help people gets in a bad car accident, mm-hmm. doesn't die, but becomes in a vegetable state, permanently disfigured for life, handicapped because of some drunk jackass. And he survives. Yeah, He's okay. Like a couple of scratches. Of course, alcohol helps make yeah. you survive because it puts you Your in body's a... body's numb. Exactly. And that is what really makes you mad. You, like, what happened in Miami not a couple of a month ago. A guy drunk, wrong way, kills five kids, innocent kids, young kids, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is why does this have to happen? Why can't it be the drunk guy, you know? Of course, let me not say that because some people will get, you know. Mad. Yeah. The point is, is what also makes me mad. Here's what gets me mad too domestic related incidents. Mm-hmm. Um, a girl kills a girl, like what happened to Kayla. Mm-hmm. Why? Don't kill the girl. Actually, embrace her. Thank you. Now I know my man likes someone else. Let me move on. But it also happens, you you hear this word. In Lauder Hill, in Wimbledon, 19th Street, 56. I actually yes. went over there and recorded. A guy got killed. Why? A ex-husband came back to get his things. He goes in the house, goes on the the, the third floor, sees his wife, his well, his ex-wife with their man. Mm. That man on the bed, they're making love, right? Mm-hmm. Gets up and says, yo, back up, man. My... Boom, shoots him in the chest. He dies. Shoots the ex-husband in the Shoots chest. the ex-husband. Wow. Because they started fighting. Yeah. Here's the deal. Why are you fighting over some? Move on. There's so many beautiful women with so much to offer. And Why that, do you and, have to kill yourself? That's yourselves? one of those things to where, you know, especially if it's one of those cases to where you make it out alive. Yeah. You realize it wasn't worth it. Also, you're, in, you're in jail but, and now the kids are... Fatherless, you know. But sadly, sometimes these incidents only, you know, result in jail or death to where yeah. the decision is final. It's the lucky over. ones get to, you know, get out of that situation and be like, you know, I'm so happy that yeah. I didn't die. I'm not in jail. I can learn from this. Right. So it's it's always so easy, of course, to be like, you know, why couldn't this person do that? But that co- that goes into so many factors of, you know, mental health. Uh, yeah. Are these people, you know are right in the head. Are they thinking correctly? They're angry. They're doing things out of emotion. So all those factors come into play. Um, and another thing when it comes to the drunk driving, I want you to give a message to the people if you can look in the camera and tell them, you know. Oh, love to. You know, what not to do. What you prefer. If they're going to drink and go out, 
what should they do? You know, hopefully this can get to somebody and they can, you know, realize, you know, they'll think twice because you're really not, not endangering only your life. You're endangering everybody's lives around you. So what would you have to say about that? Here is the best message that I've learned to give people. And that is nothing. No one will ever learn. No matter how many accidents I go, oh, people will always dr- drive drunk. Why? Because you don't, you can't stop yourself from drinking. Once you take that first shot, you feel tipsy and you keep going. Hey, I'm going to be honest with you, man. Um, some people can do it. Most people can't. There is no message. I can tell you all day not to drink and drive. I could show you very detailed videos, animated videos about how crashes occur. It ain't going to teach anybody. As a matter of fact, it will make people feel more invincible saying, wait a minute. I, I do, do it all the time. Things. I do it all the time. But not only that, wait a minute. This guy crashed and died. Let me just drink a little less and not get drunk. As long as I just dr- drink a little bit, I'll be okay. Here's the message. you know. Watch my videos. If you really care about your family, kids, and if you want to live, all right, you got to put that bottle down, you know. Put a chain to that bottle. Drink it at home. You know, mm. it's not so hard to get a taxi. I know it's taxi, expensive. Uber, whatever. Make Here's the deal. Bottom line: DUI. That is now the charge you can get is what attempted murder. You know, you can vehicular homicide. You know, is it worth it? Is it worth it? You'll be in jail forever. No one wants to hire. No one wants to mess with you. You'll be. You'll probably get killed in jail. Because someone will hire the at- another inmate to come and get you. It happens. So you'll never win. You know, that's the, the message I can give. That's the message. And hopefully somebody takes heed to it. Like, you know, like Breaking News Reporter says, maybe you won't. But, you know. The only way to learn is to get in a, in a deadly car accident. You kill somebody, maybe you might learn. But I've seen cases, the person never learns. It's, it's actually pretty interesting. What, what would you say the third biggest story? Third biggest story of this year is going to be, unfortunately, a man, I think in late 20s, that was shot in the head, killed in Lauder Hill on the address of 55th and right under 19th Street, next to the Turnpike. What happened was, I think this was some sort of dispute. Maybe he was targeted by somebody. I never realized the reason, but that video somehow got a lot of attention. A lot of people were very deeply saddened by this man had died. I never knew this, really the story. I try to get more information, but the, there's so many deaths and murders that they can't solve it, so they can't really get the reasons why. Okay. You know, but he was somebody that a lot of people loved and knew. That wasn't their big story, Lauderdale, of what I can tell you. you know? Okay. So now that being said, those are three three big stories. Yeah. Um, one in Tamarack, another one a car accident, another one in Lauderdale. Hill. Yeah. It brings us to our next uh, t- uh, topic. What are some of the most dangerous cities that you're seeing right now in Broward um, that, you know, that's resulting in, you know, shootings, killings, death? Sure. Um, what are some of those cities that you're finding? I always tell people, you know, it's always going to be Miami, right? But we're focusing on Broward County. It's always going to be... Well, if, even if you want to throw some um, my, Miami cities in there, Miami or Broward, and no, Broward. You know, you know, Miami, it's it's now Homestead, believe it or not. Homestead. It's, it's, it's a lot of now. activity over there. Let's, but anyways, Broward County, if you really want to know the most dangerous areas, it's going to be only certain areas of Lauder Hill, small parts of Lauder Lakes, some west parts of Fort Lauderdale, Little certain areas of Pompano Beach, and that's it. Other than that, it's just occasional th- things here and there. Okay. The hot zones are going to be what I call the death triangle. I hate to say it like that, but it's come to that recently yeah. with a lot of these shootings in Lauder Hill. Anywhere on the Turnpike, 19th Street, 56. This is a place called U Street. I'm sure you heard about uh, it. Yeah. You know, I used to live in those areas. I know those areas well. South of Oakland Park, north of Sunrise Boulevard, 1956. Then you go to 19th on uh, maybe 21st, go a little more south. You're going to head to 21st, and that's also no- – sorry. Go more down as well, north of Sunrise Boulevard, right where the swap shop. There's a big old mm-hmm. parking lot. It's an apartment complex. It's called the uh, 441 Inverary. Yeah, I, yeah I, know, I know the area. That's another hot spot of shootings. 
Then Laura Lakes. Laura Lakes is, I say, it's pretty calm. You know, I haven't heard of another shooting there in been a long time. It's always going to be probably State Road Seven, Warwick Park, Lakes Elementary, is. okay, and a little hot zone, uh, more towards the mobile homes, close to Board Anderson. It's a little hot. It's not really that bad. You know, not really that bad. And Fort Lardo is going to be, I wouldn't say Cistrunk. Everybody always says a Cistrunk. No, mm-hmm. Cistrunk has gotten beautiful new development. Uh, I don't like those condos. You know, they ruin. <laughs> yeah, they get they, they destroy people's houses. Um, it's going to be probably, Gentrified. I hate gentrification. Mm. You ruin people's homes. Where are those people going to go? Yeah, they got to relocate. Where are they going to go? And it's all fake. Luxury condo. There is no luxury condo. You slap some modern paint, modern design, put a spa at gym. Mm-hmm. Now it's all beautiful. Yeah. Oh, they rent it to, to people. People coming from the different states that, that pay more rent. Yeah, anyways, that's all. They don't know where they live. <laughs> if you really want to know the most dangerous areas, it's going to be some parts of Lauder Hill. And anywhere, and, and, and from the highway to Six and Broward Boulevard, Sunrise Boulevard, there's a certain area that's uh, west of the Broward Sheriff's Office. I think it's so Broward Boulevard going close to 31st, MLK, right with the yeah. shop. Mm-hmm. That's sort of a hot zone. I haven't really heard of shootings there, really. You know, it's really been happening in Lauder Hill areas. You okay. Know. So, all that being said, yeah. Now, in a lot of these shootings, mm-hmm. Are you are you getting the sense that they're more either targeted or it's more off of, you know, altercations that one thing leads to another? Or could it be just, you know, muggings or yeah. random? Like, what what is the sense of you getting of these, from these killings? Okay, so it's going to be uh, domestic. Okay. It's going to be a recent shooting in Lauder Hill that happened Sunday, last Sunday, was somebody was trying to sell their iPad. They got robbed and shot. Yes, I've seen your report on that. What happened in Lauder Lakes was, uh, uh, you know, somebody that was trying to cut traffic, ran over motorcycles, road rage shooting. So you're going to have three things, road rage shooting, domestic, and retaliation. There was this kid, 16-year-old, that was shot by four others. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were fighting, and somebody pulled out a gun and shot him. So I would, yeah, it's going to be domestic, you know, and that you're, that's your three main calorie, categories, you know. All right. And from that point, is there anything people can do you to steer clear of that of that stuff? Like yeah. If, uh, that, that you would say, I mean, of course, you know, there are certain things that yeah. people can't avoid. But, you know, I've seen some reportings of you saying that people, you know, being in their cart late night in certain bad areas yeah. to where, you know, they've been targeted. You know, you'll be surprised. You can go anywhere you want and be safe. And there's an old cliche that goes, be at the right place at the wrong time or whatever. Yeah. Okay, first. So I lived on, uh, I lived in Lauder Hill most of my life and yes. Lauder Lakes. Mm-hmm. I survived. Constant shootings, you know. And the way you survive is stay out of people's business. Yeah, yeah my Leave damn business. people alone. If someone wants to pick a fight, it's not cowardly to walk away. At the end of the day, you're still alive. Here's the Buy deal. Business. Here's the deal. If somebody is talking to your girl, and I know it sucks, don't die for that. Don't try to prove that you're the big head honcho of the street. Because at the end of the day, unfortunately, you don't own that block. It's owned by the city. <laughs> you die. Hick, you pay. You pay your taxes. I'm gonna pay the city. It's not yours. I wish it was yours. That'd be great. I wish. <laughs> they, That's they, real. The they people should finally see. That's real. I wish oh. it was theirs. You know, because it should be theirs. You know. Here's the thing: leave people alone. Stay out of people's business. The problem why people get killed is because they poke their nose where it shouldn't belong. You just gotta leave people alone. So, for example, let's say this, um, or sometimes people will say, "Oh, it's drug drug trafficking." You're selling, there's competition, you're, so, you know, this isn't the 80s and 90s where it was really that bad, you know, mm-hmm. or cartel are running the, the, these yeah, roads. Exactly. But the main reason why people get shot is because, you know, you, unfortunately, you put yourself in an unpredictable situation, you know, just if someone starts to get in the fight with you, ignore them, stop talking and walk away. They're going to poke you. They're going to really, really you back to try to engage with you. A lot of that is ego, though. It's always ego. And the problem is, is what I know, we're, hey, listen, we're all men. You know, we all like to get, you know, like top dog, especially when our friends are right here. Mm-hmm. 
And the problem is sometimes, you know, you're at certain areas, you have a gun on you, you just run high and you shoot somebody. I had a buddy of mine who was shot in the face. I hate that. Terrible. Right in the club sway, Fort Lauderdale. Why? Because he backed into his car and scratched the car. A little bit, little damage. You're really going to shoot somebody over something very small. Now nah, you're going to face jail time. Now nah, you have to run away. Now nah, you have to dump the weapon. Now nah, ballistics and crime scene, everybody's going to be after you. Now you're going to die because you shot somebody else's friend or brother or whoever. You really want that on you? Why do you want that life, you know? Definitely. Definitely. You, yeah. And whoever's listening, I mean, hey, like you said, mind your business, man. Sometimes, you know, I understand there are certain, you know, circumstances to where, you know, it's right to do. It's good to do the right thing. But, right. you know, a lot of times certain stuff does not involve you. You know, you're not the police. <laughs> you, you know, you're not. Right. Somebody who is trained to handle and deal with these type of things to where yeah. I can't tell you the amount of stories I've heard this year to where people have gotten hurt or killed with something that literally had nothing to do with them. And they thought they were doing the right thing or the correct thing. Well, sometimes that isn't enough to keep you alive. You know, the, that's a sad reality of it. So hopefully somebody does heed um, what you're saying. Now, transitioning off of that you sure. know, to, a, I guess, a brighter tone. Like, like we said, you've had an eventful 2022. Are there any 2023 resolutions that the breaking news reporter has that he wants to accomplish yeah. in 2023? I want to finally own a business. A business that, that can help the community. Laundromat, pawn shop. Because I have big plans. I want to own giveaways. I want to do contests where people can enter. People can um, submit a DM and I can pick you and I can... Grant you with something, free gas for a week. Sorry, free gas tank filled up, an oil change, something that can be productive and help you. There's so many ideas I have, but the main objective is is to grow and make the community stronger than ever. Have somebody that is that they can look up to and say, you know what? He motivated me somehow. You know, got you. And that's what give back to the community. And how will I do that? Well. By giving you something beneficial that will benefit you. That's it. That's my resolution. When I found that purpose, I can not only breathe, but I can sleep. And that is the resolution. I want to be able to finally relax. Calm down. After covering so much death, I can die now, next year. Hell. So that's what I want to do for 23. I want to, I want to live stress-free. Hopefully. Hey. And I'm I'm very happy to hear you say that because you know earlier this year when um we interviewed you yeah you were just so on go you know wow. you, you said you said something that stuck with me which like I said it helped inspire me as well because please do yes I learned to have fun with my, the work I'm doing mm. but you said that how you relax sometimes is by working hell yeah <laughs> well it's not even working. Mm -hmm. Or it's a lifestyle. Yeah. When you love something so much, like a passion, a hobby, it doesn't feel like work. Yeah. You are driven by it that if you were to die, you die finally doing what you love. That when you're up there, wherever you go, you're like, man, I don't regret anything. When you turn 60 and 70 or 80 years old, you look back and said, I don't regret anything. Hallelujah. And with all that that you feel now, are you learning or have you been able to, you know, just find other things outside of your work that have interest or that you, that you feel relaxed, maybe your home alone, entertainment wise. What is there anything like that that has developed? Yeah. I want to do more entertainment stuff. The crime, people might get bored of crime. Some people say, uh, you know what? People might get scared of too much violence. So let me do yes. some more entertainment. I want to do reality TV. I want to do documentaries. I want to do music videos. Like I, I used to do that stuff. I stopped, did news, but I want to do that. I want to do entertainment stuff because that's where it's at. You know? And that's also, you know, funny oh, wow. you, you mentioned that because yeah. one of the things, and especially with, you know, the mental health movement being as strong as it ever oh, been in course. 2022, and of course it's going to continue to grow. A lot of times when I was a kid, I would hear people say, whether my mom or just adults saying that they hate watching the news because it's so much death and so much violence. So even though what you do is very good work and very yeah. important for the community, 
you know, sometimes people may not want to look at your page because they don't want to see certain stuff. So getting that content to where, like you said, you know, you're covering um, people doing good in the community, businesses, you know, life changing experiences, Um, could be kids, adults, whoever, you know, you're just getting back into the community with fun stuff, covering certain stuff that could also not make it redundant for you, but make it fresh and fun. Fresh, fun, and public. Listen, you can finally see your friends, your family. The businesses grow. Listen, it's all about helping each other because it is so tiring to be a small artist, a rapper, an entrepreneur, and not getting a voice and then see these big names, these huge artists. They're, they're great. They're up there. What about me? We're the next generation. We're young bucks. We want to make it. It is time for somebody to come from somewhere give you a video, an interview, and boost you out there. You know, why not? Hell, I, that's what I always wanted. You know, help chance, each other out. Opportunity. Give that person a voice. Why? The reason why you want to become a reporter is because you want to be the voice for the community. That's always what they always say, right? Mm-hmm. That's exactly why you want to be a reporter. You're going to give somebody the opportunity to speak on behalf of their stories. That's it. Why not? <laughs> so you're not gonna live forever. Do something nice for somebody. You know? Now, Ain't that hard. Now with all all this being said, yeah. I kind of want to shift gears once again to the breaking news reporter himself as far as what mm. are you what are your future life plans? You know? Mm. you you we're young, you're young. Oh, of course. But do you foresee something like, you know, kids being in the future, Absolutely. starting a family, somebody something to where you can, you know, show all your great work and, you know, let them know that, like, this is what hard work takes. This is where it's bothered me. This is where, you know, it's afforded you this life. Do you think about that type of stuff? Is something like that in the near or distant future? Like, you know, what's going on? Absolutely. You know, um, but the thing is, is I only want to have kids when I have a fully paid off house, fully paid off car, land, and a good business to back them up. I had a rough life. I didn't grow up in the best environment. Mm. My father, well, that's another story. But the point is, is that I didn't have money growing up. That made my child a living inferno. There was no one, there was no opportunity, no childhood, you know? So the only way to bring kids into, into this world is to, if you, is to bring them into If you the, can help if it. If you can afford it. I'm tired of seeing all these parents that they can't afford. Their kids are now suffering. It's not their fault. But it's like, if listen, is, there's a time and place to bring them. And that's what I want. I keep switching back and forth. Forgive me, gentlemen. Uh, oh, no, 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 you're, you're fine. Uh, and that's definitely important. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to hear you say that. So those type of things, they are on your mind, but you want to do it at the correct time. As, as you would say. But here's and the all, problem. All those things yeah. have to be checked off. Not, not yeah. three out of the four. Because... Three out of the four on the list seems like you're still living a good life. Somehow, you're still, yeah. You're still living a good life. <laughs> <laughs> Not somehow. I mean, you said that you you have a business. Yeah. You, you, you have, you know, what well, you said, uh, land. Yeah. Uh, you know, so let's say not all those things are checked out, but you have a good business. You know, you have a good career. Could possibly be you say at that point, you know. I may not have certain things, but I may be ready to have a kid. Yes. But now I'm worried if am I too old. I don't want to be an old dad. Exactly. I don't want to be, you know, uh, I don't mean that's terrible. My father, he's 80 years old. Mm-hmm. We can't enjoy each other. Mm-hmm. See, I gotta, you got to take care of, you know. So you don't want to be too old. You don't want to be, you, you want to be young because now you can be 40. They're not 18, 20. Great. You can relate to your kids a bit. Maybe have That's more what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. No kid wants a parent with white hair. You know what I mean? But. You know, also, I don't want them to grow in a spoiled lifestyle. I have the money. I have the equity, right, to have kids now. I don't want them to be spoiled. And the idea that I'm always going to back them up with money, that's not the idea. That's another scary thing about having kids when you have all this luxury stuff. They see all that riches and, and, and foundation you've built, and they think they're entitled to that. Another scary thing, you know. Well, that comes to, you know, you and whatever lovely young lady you choose to, you know. If that's possible, yeah. Be be the mother of your kids, you know. That's that's why it's so important for somebody like you to find that right person because, you know, you guys are both on the same page with certain stuff. So I'm trying, you know. I'm trying. I'd say it's, young, a, it's a young, stone. eligible bachelor. 
I, you know what? I, I, I just, I, I think I'm just drawn to dangerous and toxic women. It's a flavor. It's a spice. Oh, <laughs> what am I saying? Let me not get off topic. No, we don't talk. <laughs> we right on topic. What you, what you mean by that? But, so, so I like something with spice and an explosive side. You know, something with nitrogen and phosphate. So you like getting snapped on and stuff like that, or I do. I I just like hostility. I like when a girl starts arguing because now I can learn. Okay, you're arguing. You're fighting with me. Let me wait till you slow down. Now I can interject. I just like chaos. You know, it's just kind of fun to see that. Do Do you raise your voice? Are you capable of that? Of like, of course. And- but it, it's hard to get to me. It's hard to get me mad. When I get mad, it's not. It's, it's just not a good idea. Because I'm a very calm person, but I have to get angry when it's the appropriate time to, to, to teach that person, listen, it's this way. But when it comes to that, I'm not, it's, if it's not even a serious relationship, I'm not going to get mad. Why? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm just going to go find someone that I can connect well with and have fun opportunity, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but with all your Breaking work, news reporter. With all your work, how do you find those people, though? It sucks, right? I work so much that it's hard to date and go out here and there to meet people. You know? It's pretty alone for most of the time, you know? So you just got to balance stuff out, you know? The worst thing is to find someone that's going to waste your time. Mm. You invest in ener- your energy, your time, your devotion, you know? And come to find out that nothing prolongs from it, you know? I'm not asking for everything. I'm just asking for your small amount of time to go on a little journey with me you know facts Facts. nothing crazy nothing serious people don't like the word serious they get scared of that so i just say listen let's just enjoy like we've been friends since high school that seems to work you know have a little safety paint a picture for them paint a little picture listen if no strings attached no money down nothing (laughs) like you're selling a car like you're selling a vehicle you know, for if sure, you man. don't like it, here's a receipt. Return me back in the week. That's with, it. With all the work that you're doing, you know, sure. how busy you are, can you get into a serious relationship? No. Unfortunately, I can't. That's what really uh, breaks me down. You know? So. I want to, but it's not possible nowadays. No one wants that. Okay. Those days are a long gone. I'm serious. Okay. okay. So it's not even about what you want necessarily. Nobody wants to deal with somebody as busy as as you committed no. nah listen i i love the the audience so much that i really need to get that breaking news story that that you can have see here's the thing you can't have a serious relationship because you gotta devote a lot of time to your to the other partner right mm-hmm. you gotta have a balance well, that's impossible because when you go on a dinner date it's an hour and she wants you to come back and spend more time with her, which i can do that no problem fine love doing that very affectionate but i have to also take care of People that need the news, you know. So, and she will get mad. You know, they get mad. Oh, why? Why do you care about them? You know, who are all these people you're trying to impress? What about mm-hmm. me? You know, yeah. oh, I'll impress you. You know, once I make it big and I have this big collateral, all Stay this money. Stay down till he come up. Absolutely. Stay down, man. Oh, they'll come back once I'm filled I'm with sure. riches and all that. You know, I'm so sure they will. It, it'll be, it'll be too late though. You gonna come back? Too late. You know. Uh-huh. Enjoy what you have now. You know. Most definitely. Uh, now, breaking news reporter, before we end off, man, sure. let the people know what they can expect from you in 2023 with your work and everything. And, of course, if they already don't know, which they should, where they could follow you at. Listen, you can follow me on all social media platforms, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, please, let's grow it, at The Breaking News Reporter. Those simple words, all lowercase. You can follow me, subscribe, all free of charge. You just have to watch the videos for a couple of seconds, and that's all. And I'll keep you guys updated. Commercial free news. For sure, man. This guy is doing amazing work in the community. He'll continue to do amazing work in the community. And I'm just very proud of you, my guy. Oh, thanks. I'm happy to see where you've come from and see that you're continuously growing. And uh, like I said, you you inspire me. Hell yeah. With the work I do. And um, shout out to you, man. Shout out to you. Uh, thank you guys. This was our wrap up for the year in news with the breaking news reporter. Uh, hopefully you guys have a great new year and everything for 2023. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. It's Kyle the Kid, Mega the Boy, the breaking news reporter. 
and we're out. Yeah, did. Yes, sir.